it's very hard to arrange. I'm thankful that I was a graphic designer before I became a photographer, so I was used to arranging elements. And so that was fairly easy for me because I've been doing it for 12 years. I've been arranging elements on pieces of paper. But it's the same thing with people. So I sort of had a feel to it uh, beforehand. Okay, pose, what if, when you want to do a group shot, the first thing you do is look for even lighting, shade, something that has completely even lighting. And even in this case, I didn't have even lighting because you can see some highlights on their hair, but it was the best I could do. This was the only place in the entire, it was like smoking hot that day. It was like 90 or 100 degrees. And so this was the only area there was some shade and people could give me a nice natural smile without being felt burned up, okay? So that's the first thing is to use, find, look for even lighting. And so sometimes all you got, in this case, I've got a picnic table and I've got shade. That's it. So that's what I had them for, okay? So pose subjects in even lighting, no hot spots. Use a flash, I use a little bit of flash in there to create those rich, deep colors. See the color popping out on that? And so when you use your flash, you're able to really, it's off camera flash, to really pop the color in this case. Also what I do is I zoom, I, I use the longest lens possible. Because what happens is, when you use the longest lens possible, it compresses the image, which means when you use your longer lens, it brings the background closer to the subject and makes it look bigger. And then you get that blurred out effect like that. So in this case, I think I shot it at 70 millimeters, okay? So that's it. If I had longer, I would have shot it at longer. It would have looked even better with more blurrier background. And so in this case here, this was in Paris, this wedding. And they wanted to walk all the way across and get this. They had their wedding in this 14th century mansion. It was a ca actually, it was a real, it was a castle. There was a real moat around the whole thing and whatever. But they wanted that in the background. So we got over to the other side and I go, well, you can't even hardly see the mansion at this point. So I had to just zoom it out at 105 millimeters, walk way back to bring that mansion forward. Same thing here, uh, well, no, this is not the same thing, but what makes things creative for me? See, like I have my basic poses, but what gets my creative juices going to make me do something different? Structures. Structures get my creative juices going because then I can get my graphic design mind in and I can place elements in different places. So uh, what we did is we found this abandoned, you know, uh, trains, and so I got them up there. I had to pose every single person. Say, they just don't naturally do this. You got to do it. And so you got to, you got to, this takes practice to actually pose. And then, because the problem is, is this, you're going to pose her. By the time you get to be posing him, she's changed already. She's walking over here, doing something, doing her Facebook or whatever. So you've got to really keep their attention going. And you know, if they say, move, hey, don't move. Stay right there. Stay with me. How you guys, stay with me, everybody. I just need a few minutes. Hang in there. We're going to get this done. I keep talking to them like that, right? And then I start posing everybody. And by the time there, I can get the picture. But you got to really talk it through to make sure that they don't move. Here's another thing. It's like uh, in, on the beach. And so I posed every single person, every single per literally, lean forward. OK, you guys go back to back. OK, you go this way. You, oh, dude, you got to lean on one leg. OK, come over here. You're in this. You're back there, right? Pop your hip for me out. Oh, thank you. OK, dude, put your leg out. Every single person was posed by me. And that's the case which you got to do. And so that's why I said you got to learn how to pose one person before you compose a lot of people, because they're not going to naturally fall into place like that. You got to make it happen. Okay, interesting stru structures create different moods. Okay, let's say you got a. This is the bridal party. This is what I had to deal with and shoot it. They want me to shoot a big group picture of them. All I had was one six chairs. So I took the six chairs, put them across, 
then I've automatically got three levels or more, right? So I got people on the ground, then I got people sitting on the chairs, and then I got people above. So one row of chairs can be your best friend when you're trying to pose huge groups. You got automatically three levels, and then make them do something. What do you think I said to them here? Funny faces? Yeah, make a funny face. <laughs> Same thing, right? Chairs, that's all I had. Levels, put them in the shade, take a shot, and then make them do something interesting. This posed every, it created a scene. I saw this little cafe on the side. They wanted something different. Okay, let's create this romantic moment, uh, right? And so like, oh, I'm killing myself right now because I should have turned her head more towards the camera and him the other way. But anyways, okay. But then I had to pose every single one of those people. Every single one. You sit down. You two sit down together. Oh, you lean this way. Okay, you guys talk to each other. Every single person I had to pose. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. But with practice, you keep doing it, and then you can create something like that. Here, this was that these are those amazing dancer people. They came up to me and said, hey, Scott, we want to do a couple freezes. I had no idea what a freeze was, right? Because it's a dancing move, right? And so, oh, OK, great, right? Uh, uh, OK, well, find me some shade. And so he did, they went into his freeze, right? And I was on my stomach taking this picture, creating a different angle for it. And they naturally posed themselves into that. They're awesome. Like, it's so easy. They just like went into it themselves. <laughs> that was the easiest posing ever. OK, look at it. Creative angle. You don't got anything. You want to do something different? You get on the ground, and you shoot up, uh, shoot up, and you have them lean forward and do something interesting to it. Be creative about it. Okay, um, here I'm creating different by putting the groom lower and moving him forward and having his men in the background. Um, again, these guys are awesome. They just pose that way. They're all dancers, so they just like kind of all leaning with one leg, right? But if they don't, you're going to have to do that with the men because they're going to stand up really stiff and straight. Okay, you got to take a high angle sometimes. So when everybody's on the same level, you're not going to be able to see them unless you raise your camera up really high. And so this is the case here, where I had them all together, leaning together, and I took my camera real high, and I shot it so I can see everybody. If I didn't have my camera angle high, I wouldn't be able to see everybody. Same here. This was like way up here, so I could see everybody in that school bus. So she was a teacher. And so what she did was rented a school bus to take everybody around him. OK, now I'm taking a lower angle where I'm using stairs. Instead of shooting up on the stairs, I'm shooting down below and separating her by bringing over her to the wall. Here again, I'm using stairs, uh, chairs. That's all I had. These guys are taller than me. So what I got to do is I got to get them down, spread them out. Then I'm standing on top of a chair also on top of that. So I I'm not only have uh, my camera, is, it's more than that. I'm actually standing on the chair so I can create this distance between them. If I didn't, his head would be right over his head, and that doesn't look cool. So you got to get raise the angle so you could create distance uh, between the subjects. Sometimes. The bride and the groom are going to come up to you and going to say, we want to get a picture of the entire wet, a guest, all of the guests. What do you do? You have to take a higher angle. So you find anywhere where you can get above and shoot everybody. So you're, you know, I'm above them, and I'm doing this and looking right to get that higher angle. Once you go higher, then you can see everybody. Okay, movement through a scene again. So you can create a scene, and then you can have them move through the scene and create some kind of emotion there. And that's what I did here. Same thing. I had them run at me while I took a slow shutter. Okay? This is great if you want to have them move, but the bridal party is large. If you want to keep them together, I have them hold hands or link arms. Because what happens if you have them run through this scene, when you do it, she's way over here. 
She's faster because they don't run at the same rate. But if you have them link hands, then they're going to stay together and they can make sure you got the shot if they're linking hands. And so I'll do arm in arm. So this is a particular post that I do just to create some, I create an interesting background. I have them lock arms. Okay, let's have them do that. Okay, all the ladies come up here. Stand up here. We're going to shoot this way here. Okay, so stand right here and lock arms. Okay, you, yeah, you're good. Okay, so yeah, go arm in arm. Okay, now on the count of three, I want you to walk this way and I want you to give me something really sexy and exaggerated, okay? And look at each other and have fun and smile. Ready, go! Click, 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 right? That's not good enough. You didn't sell me. Go do it again, all right? So do it again one more time. Come on, I want something, some laughter. Ha ha ha, fun. Just go. You're having the best time of your life. Ready, go! Sell it, sell it. There you go. Bam, 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 bam. They're all together. Thank you very much. See, they're all together at that point, and not, there's not one straying off, so I can keep them organized. Because if you have them do that by themselves, it's not going to work. I, I guarantee you. One person, and this, like this, this is what's going to happen, is that they're going to just go crazy. But in this particular case, I wanted that to happen. It wasn't necessary for me to get everybody, but I wanted that feel of running through a scene, okay? What, this is the worst case scenario ever. Bright light, um, and you've gotta shoot this photo, so what you gotta do is use two light stands, and you gotta create light on each side here with two light stands. If I had my on-camera flash only, this distance is farther away than these two. So let's say I was taking a picture of you folks, okay? and it was really bright light, okay? If I was shooting here to get you every, in everybody's frame, my flash would be how far away? Like 10 feet away. But I can move my flashes in closer if I have one here and I have one here. If I half the distance to my subjects, my flash becomes four times more powerful. Okay, so even moving something just a couple feet can make a huge difference in power. I don't want to get into the inverse square law because we don't have time right now, but just trust me. So if you are in this situation and you need to shoot in this extremely bright light, you're going to need, just trust me, you're going to need a lot of light. Okay, so in this particular case, I had two flashes. They're probably on half power each, and, but they're close to illuminate the subjects. There, and I even had one on-camera flash too, just to fill it. So if you're in this situation and you're for shooting a group like that, make sure you have two light stands or you got two assistants holding your flash for you off to the side so you could get that light real close instead of far back. Okay, use an umbrella when outdoor event I know, uh, here, right? So I'm shooting a group, this is just one umbrella. I'll go over this lighting a little bit later too, is that one umbrella, one flash, but the trick is, let me show you the formula. I've gone over this in my lighting lecture too, so I'm gonna go over it really fast because a lot of people have seen this already. So what you do basically is you just put your ISO high at six. This is why I said it's important for you to get a high ISO because sometimes you need to shoot at high ISO. In this case, I did this at 1600. That made my flash 16 times more powerful. So I could put it through one umbrella, get that, put it on one quarter power. If you're at 10 feet away, it should do the job for you. So that's the formula. So if you're 12 feet away or 10 feet away, just don't, don't ask me any questions. Just do it. It works. <laughs> you can figure out the math. Like get my other lecture, and you'll understand why. Put it at a quarter power, and bam, you should have enough power to do it. OK. And so outdoors, the umbrella at night gives me this nice, huge, soft light. So when you're outdoors, you can take a great light. If I had on-camera flash here, this shot would not look the way it's going to look. But because I could use this off-camera huge light coming down, um, I can get a shot like that. right? And we'll go over the flash techniques a little bit later. This is more about posing, so we'll just kind of run through that. So one thing is that group shots really reflect your positive energy. When you're going to get an entire group to give you the same emotion, the photographer said something, because they naturally don't do that. 
So when you want to create this energy there, you look at these people, doesn't that remind you of me when you see that expression on their face? Because I am trying, I am getting that energy out of them, making them laugh, doing something so that they'll give it to me. So group shots really reflect your positive energy and how, what you create to the scene and what you make them do. Here I'm telling them to do an air kiss. See that look? You're not gonna get that look until, unless they buy into the photographer taking the picture. It just won't be the same. So this was an Indian wedding, and I, you know, like I've been with them for s several days or whatever, and so we had a great relationship. So they're giving me a genuine smile here. You're not going to get it, that special extra sauce, unless they buy into you. They have to buy into what you're doing. This is a scene I created where I just threw some flowers on them and made them um, kind of... Uh, pretend that they had the best time of their life, throw flowers on them, shoot it. Group shots can make you or break you. Why do I say that? It's because when you do a group shot, that's the time everybody who's thinking about having a wedding next is watching you. Every time I went to a wedding, I said, I'm getting two weddings out of this. And I would perform for those people who were interviewing me. And when's the best time that you can let people see your skills is during the group shots. Everybody sees you. The, groom that, the, the, the groomsmen that's getting married next, the bridesmaids that's getting next, that's when you're, getting, you're having a job interview during your group shots. So if you're creating positive energy and you're doing a great job, people are going to come up to you. I'm sure they said, just, oh, man, you're awesome. Yeah, you, they haven't even seen your photos, but they like that positive energy that you're giving them, and that's what's going to get you the most weddings. We'll go into the business side of it, but that's what's going to get you rave. So don't take these group shots lightly. It's really what's going to put you over the top.